it? Yeah. Do you think that you are a pretty logical person? Yeah. Would you say that you are more logical than 80 to 90 percent of people? Yeah. Well, that isn't a very logical answer, is it? Welcome all. All are welcome on Debatology. I am Peter Barrett and I've been in debating for the past 10 years as a competitor and as a trainer. And on this channel, we try to figure out ways to have better conversations and come to better decisions. If you're watching this channel, odds are you think of yourself as a pretty logical person, much like Pete over there. You think that you're right, others are wrong, and you want to convince them with the almighty power of logic. Whether you are a debate nerd like me, or you just like to be right, and let's be honest, who doesn't, you probably go into conversations trying to convince other people and prove them wrong. Putting aside how cringe this attitude is, wouldn't it be great if we could test how logical you really are? I mean, you say that you're on team reason, uh, don't you? So let's test and see if that's really true. You're probably seeing me coming from a mile away here. Yes, such a test exists and you're about to experience it. So let's get to it. Okay. There are four cards in front of you, from your left to your right. The first card is U, the second card is 7, the third card is B, and the last card is 2. U, 7, B, and 2. To make it easier for you, you can grab a piece of paper or write this sequence on your device. U, 7, B, 2. There is a very important logical rule you're going to test. So, here it is. All cards with a vowel on one side have an even number on the other side. According to you, which cards should you turn to verify the rule is true? U, 7, B or 2? I really want you to think this through. Which card do you absolutely need to turn to verify the rule? All cards that have a vowel on one side have an even number on the other side. While you're thinking about it, a few words of discouragement. 80 to 90% of people fail when they take this task. In fact, since the late 1960s, when the task was first introduced in a scientific paper by another Peter, Peter Wason, 80 to 90% of people consistently failed this task. When this experiment was reproduced, changing for financial incentives, changing the words of the rule, changing the cards, recruiting expert people, every time everyone consistently failed. So I can make a fair bet that like me, the first time I took this task, you have picked the wrong cards. I could safely put money on the fact that you've chosen the card U and the number two. By turning over the U card, you're expecting, rightly, to find an even number on the other side. But by turning over the two card, I'm sorry, but you're not verifying anything. You got this wrong. In fact, I got this wrong too. I felt so stupid the first time I took this task. It took me multiple explanations by multiple people to really unstuck my brain and understand why I didn't get it right. Assuming that you're smarter than me, here's why you got this wrong. Your brain is not logical. The rule we're trying to test here is if vowel, then even number. If vowel, then even number. So when you're turning over the U card, sure, you're testing the rule. But when you're turning over the two card, there could be a vowel or a consonant on the other side because it does not imply if even number, then vowel. At this point, you're probably confused. So let me give you an example. If I said to you, all dogs have four legs, it doesn't imply that all four-legged animals are dogs. Some are cats or sheep or horses, well, you get my point. In fact, the only way to test a rule is to turn over the U card and the seven. As you know, when you're turning over the U card, you're expecting an even number on the other side. 
And when you're turning over the seven, you're expecting anything but a vowel. That's the point. You're testing the rule by the negative. This experiment is called the Wason task. And whilst it was created more than 50 years ago, it is still used today broadly by scientists for groundbreaking research. You getting this task wrong, as I did, is so fascinating as it begs many questions about our relationship to our cognition. I mean, it's scary, isn't it? I think of myself as a pretty logical person, and yet I got this completely wrong. How can I trust my brain to do anything? Having gone through this existential crisis, I've been looking for an answer. And let me tell you, it is beautiful. One of these answers you just wish were true, and when it ends up being true, it's like, yes. While I have you at the maximum level of attention, it's the right time to tell you to subscribe and like this video for more debate science. It all starts with René Descartes. Descartes was a prominent scientist and mathematician of the 17th century. And one of his main ideas was dualism. The idea that you have a separation between the mind and body. What's also called in philosophy the mind-body problem. René believed that the human physical body was detached from the mental phenomena. What we would today call consciousness. Dualism isn't as in vogue today, but it isn't like we have solved the hard problem of consciousness, so it's worth taking a second to think about it. Dualism as a concept fed into many theories of the mind, including reasonably recent ones from the cognitivist movement. What this movement advances is the idea that the human brain is its own computer machines. As long as it gets data in, it should output in its own right. That means that you could have a brain in a vacuum or a brain uploaded into a computer and have very similar results than if it was attached to a physical body. In other words, if you're able to find a solution to a problem as a result of discussions or dialogues, surely if we use this data involved in the discussion and give it to you in the first place, your brain should be able to figure out the problem by yourself. Multiple studies tested this theory using the ways and task. What they did is that they asked people to individually give their best guess at the ways and task. Then, without giving them the answer, they would put them in a room with a small group of people, three to five people, and then they would have to figure it out again. What the scientists found is that not only did people drastically improve their chances, but when they were put in a small group, it was a full 180 turnaround. From 80 to 90% failure, it became an 80% success rate. Even more impressively, when groups were composed of people who all failed the ways and task, when they were put in a small group, a majority of them were successful. That's 0% that transforms into a 50% success rate. It's just crazy. As a group, we are more logical than alone. That's just mind blowing. These experiments managed to put to rest the idea of the lone genius. But more interestingly, it begs many questions about our intuition when it comes to making decisions. Indeed, it's very common for us to want to think things through, to think that we should consider all of our options and take some time alone. Wouldn't what these scientists found suggest that we should get together with a small group of friends and try to figure out what to do? According to recent theories from the post-cognitivist movement, the answer is yes. Our brain doesn't live in a vacuum. It is in a constant feedback loop between our experience of the world, the senses we have, our environment, but also our body and our social interactions. All of these things are helpful for our cognition. I think it would probably be surprising to only a few people that our brains aren't logical computing machines. But what are they? From René Descartes to the cognitivists and the post-cognitivist movements, scientists have tried to figure out the answer. And some recent theories are really interesting. According to Hugo Mercier and Dan Sperber, two cognitive scientists, our brain's relationship to reason is that we form arguments that support our a priori positions 
in order to confront them in a social context to come to better decisions. That is called the argumentative theory of reason. This theory of reason correlates extremely well with other research ideas, from confirmation bias to our susceptibility to fake news or even the information bubbles. The idea is that when we're alone by ourselves, being reinforced by others with the same opinion, we cannot function cognitively. Indeed, we are very much maladapted to only be surrounded with people who think like us. So, to put it simply, you are not logical, but we are. I really like the way Tom Stafford, a cognitive scientist out of the University of Sheffield puts it, the truth wins. In a group, the truth wins. I thought that the answer was beautiful. How can you be more logical? How can you reason better? Debate. But it isn't as easy as it sounds. Obviously, we can all think of terrible debates we've been involved in where people at the end of it were just even more entrenched in their original ideas. So how can we have more productive discussions? Well, that will be on for next time on Debatology. I really want to thank Tom Stafford and his colleagues at the Delibot Research Project. Their work was a great inspiration for this video. I really hope I can have them over once for a longer discussion. I try very hard to source everything I tell you on this show, so check out in the description below. The debate is open in the comments. Please contribute in good faith and good spirit. Every day, I work with organizations to change behaviors, improve critical thinking or business ethics. If these topics interest you, you can check out my personal website, phsbarrett.com, and I'll see you next time on Debatology.